Ivan, how are you? <laughs> this are, is from Sicily. We are in Sicily. We are in Palermo, the capital of Sicily. We are in front of the Massimo Opera House. A masterpiece. Rosella, please. Do you remember? Maybe some one of you uh, saw the Godfather trilogy by Francis Ford Coppola. This is the location of the yeah. third chapter of the trilogy. Massimo Opera House is one of the most beautiful theater in uh, in the world, the third largest uh, theater in uh, in the world. And so, Janka, please share with our friends why the reason why we are here now. We decided to to give you a special gift. This is the first. In the next days, you will receive uh, other gifts. Uh, this is the first one. Uh, we decided to to give you a, a great experience. It's a virtual experience, of course, but it's a great experience. We will give you the chance to discover Palermo. We will meet in a uh, few minutes a tourist guide and we will let you see the most important tourist attractions. So, I already know that uh, uh, always a lot of people ask uh, uh, is it Palermo worth visiting? Is it Palermo safe? Is it Palermo a beautiful town? So, yes, we will try. <laughs> we will try to answer, but not uh, by by words, by images. So, you will see with your eyes what Palermo is. And this is just a preview, because of course, we always hope you come to to visit Palermo, to visit Sicily. We really look forward to meeting you soon. So guys, let's start. Enjoy the tour. We are in front of the Massimo Theater. We are in uh, Via Ruggero VII, one of the most beautiful uh, road streets in uh, in Palermo. Uh, this way, that way we go to the modern district. Uh, but if you if you talk about Palermo, modern means at least uh, a couple of centuries. So we go to the Politiama Theater. That way, we go to the Maqueda Street, to the Four Corners, to the heart of the city center, and then we will move to the Cassaro, to the Corso Vittorio Emanuele Road. So we are now in the heart of the city center. I am the in the center of the square. This is called Quattro Canti. In English, four corners. Because if you see first, second, third, and four. Every corner represents something different. The four season at the first stage, the first floor. Four important uh, Spanish kings on the second floor. Four saints of Palermo on the third floor. So every corner is different. Spring, summer, autumn, winter. Philip II, the second, the third, the fourth. Then we have uh, Santa Rosalia, Santa Cita, Santa Oliva, a melting pot of different elements. The natural ones, the political ones, and the religion ones. A syncretism. This is 
the center of the center of the center of Palermo. I am in the center. <laughs> this square represents the interception between Corso Vittorio Emanuele, that from the old acropolis of the town moved to the, to the sea, that's the Mediterranean. This is a very old road built from built by the uh, Phoenicians, then used by the Arabians, then by the Normans, and then of course by the Spanish. A lot of domination in Sicily, and uh, all domination left something important. And this is the second most important road called Via Maqueda that uh, points to the most modern uh, area of the town but of course if we talk about Palermo we have to consider at least uh, at least a couple of centuries but this road boasts almost 2000 and uh, six or seven hundred years of heritage. We go now to meet our special friend, a special tourist guide called Laura, that will teach you, that will introduce you Palermo and his hidden treasures. Bye! <laughs> We are in a special location in Palermo, in the old city center, with Laura, our special tourist guide in Palermo. Laura, where we are now? Hello, guys. Uh, we are now exactly in the center of the city center, near the town hall that is at our back, and we are inside the Fountain of the Shame. Do you know why it uh, had this name? Look! <laughs> Look at the na naked statues. So we are just in the city center. The official name of this place is the Praetorian Square, uh, just because we are near the town hall that was once the Praetorian uh, Palace, the pr Praetorian residence. And we are in the <laughs> uh, near the fountain, the fountain of the shame, because the fountain was not made for Palermo, but it was made in Florence. And when uh, they decided to transport it to Palermo in the second half of the 60s, centuries when all the, ma the, the, the fountain was reassembled here all the naked statues gave a scandal they were really uh, offensive for the idea of the time also because we are here in a nice square overlooked by two churches by two baroque churches and above all the square is overlooked by that building over there the yellow one that was once a monastery, a cloistered monastery for cloistered nuns. So when the poor nuns um, looking over from, the, uh, from their building, from their windows, saw all these naked statues here, that was quite a scandal. And that's why, uh, that's the reason why the fountain was given the name of Fountain of the Shame. There on the right you can see the town hall, it is possible to visit it now because our mayor wants to underline the idea of Palermo as a welcoming and friendly and open town and um, uh, you can see here old Rosella is walking, is having a walk among all the statues with um, Greek uh, gods, goddesses, allegorical figures, animals. There are 24 heads of animals, some real animal or some imaginary animal. So it's a nice place. It's quite, um, it's quite unusual for Palermo. It's a Renaissance square that is not typical from uh, our town, but it's quite interesting. Why? Well, on the other side, there is another beautiful building that is the St. Joseph uh, Church, a baroque building with this beautiful um, dome, a yellow and, uh, and green uh, baroque dome. And uh, we can start from here to have a nice walk of the town. We are inside the town hall, our palace of the eagles, because the eagles are the symbol of Palermo. 
uh, it dates back the, uh, to the Roman age, the symbol of Palermo, the eagle as the, single of the, as the symbol of Palermo. And so we are just inside the town hall, the town hall that is now open to the visit because our mayor has decided to do that. So he, there you can see the eagle symbol of the town with the with description SPQP as the Roman one, uh, Senato Populusque Panormitano. So it refers to the people and the city of Palermo during the Roman time. Because even if maybe I didn't tell you, but Palermo has got a very, very long history. Now I'll give you a special view of a special place of Palermo. Look at this. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> the two churches you can see from here, from above, are the two medieval churches of San Cataldo, that's on the right, and Martorana, that's on the left, with its beautiful uh, bell tower. And they, are, they date back to the 12th century, to the uh, Arab Norman period. Palermo is characterized by this uh, medieval uh, style, the so-called Arab Norman. That is a beautiful style that um, tells us about a period of coexistence and cooperation between people and culture. Uh, and be different people and different cultures who spoke different languages because during the Middle Ages during the Middle Ages Christian um, Jews um, Greek Orthodox and Arabs they all lived here together and they cooperated and worked alongside each other to build these amazing uh, cathedral and churches and palaces this is the town hall where our mayor and his uh, administration work. This is where our administrators decide our future and <laughs> the future of the town. It's a 18th century hall. Uh, these windows provide uh, a beautiful view of the fountain below. You can see our elliptical fountain that is actually a bit too big from the square for the square, but that because uh, the fountain was not uh, designed for the square actually, but for Florence. But now uh, it is. Uh, it has been here for uh, uh, almost 500 years, so we are really used to see it here. Behind that door there is the, um, the mayor room, the mayor office, so this is the place where he works. And he has decided to put on display, on this table just near his office, three special objects. We can see, it from the, we can see them from the other side. It's interesting because you can see here this silver object with a Christian cross on the middle. Then there is a silver Quran that was given to the mayor some years ago. And then uh, a small uh, Hebrew inscription on this candle. So these are the symbols of the three monotheistic religions that were processed here during the Middle Ages when Palermo was, uh, was the capital of a reign of, of a kingdom of coexistence and cooperation. Because um, we are just in the center of the Mediterranean, so everyone has passed from Sicily, from the Phoenicians to the Romans, Greeks, Arabs, Spanish, Spaniards, French, a lot of people passed from here. And everyone has left something on our, in our DNA, in our culture, in our food, in our architecture, in our Heart. So it's important to remember all of them. It's important to remember our past, our beautiful and very rich past. And during the Middle Ages, that was the best period of our history. And that was uh, after the Islamic domination, when the Christians arrived, and the new Christian um, sovereigns, the new Christian kings, decided to build a new kingdom based on uh, tolerance and coexistence. And now let's leave at our back the Renaissance period, period and let's go to the Middle Times. It's just around the corner. <laughs> you can pass from uh, the 15th century to the Middle Ages just uh, in, a, in a few meters. 
We are now arriving to um, Bellini Square. He takes the names from the name from um, the Bellini Theatre. He was a famous Sicilian composer, music composers. So these two churches on my back are uh, the Martorana Church on the left and San Cataldo Church on the right. They date back to the 12th century and they are both uh, UNESCO World Heritage Sites now. They were built in the 12th century by Islamic architects decorated by uh, Byzantine uh, artists with a, an, an amazing uh, Byzantine mosaic but they were built as Christian church because they are a testimony of a period of coexistence, of extraordinary coexistence and cooperation of different cultured, uh, cultures that c live together here in the Middle Ages and uh, it's something that was um, really uh, amazing and extraordinary in the Middle Times. What about the coexistence of different culture in food? Well, everyone has left uh, an imprint in our food, in our gastronomy, but of course the most of, mm, well, the major uh, changes were mm, um, brought here by the Arabs uh, that mm, conquered Sicily in the middle times in the 9th century AD, they stayed here for two centuries and half. And of course, let's consider for example that they introduced a lot of new crops, uh, citrus, um, mulberry and above all sugar cane. Let's think that sugar was not cultivated in Europe until the before the, the arrival of the Arabs. So all our pastries and candied fruit was made thanks to the sugar introduced by the Arabs. Maybe, maybe it's better we will uh, show our friend what we are talking about. So let's go to one of the best outdoor market in Palermo, okay? Yeah, you'll see. It's, a, it's really nice to go to a market. Let's have to have lunch there. Let's go. <laughs> And we are now going to the Ballarò district. Ballarò is still today one of the most multicultural districts of the ancient Palermo. And you can see a testimony of this multi, mm, melting pot on the street signs. As you can see, it is written in three languages, in Italian, Hebrew and Arabic. Do you feel like eating something? Okay, you have plenty of choice. The typical Sicilian street food with arancini, the small oranges that are rice balls. Uh, mm. Chickpea fritters. And chickpea fritters. Panelle, chickpea Panelle fritters croquette. with croquet. And potato. And potato cro croquettes. So, do you feel like eating something? You can come to a market, here we are at the Ballarò market and you have plenty of choice. Street food, rolls, uh, fruit, prickle pears. Remember that um, the markets here in Sicily are not just food and markets, they are a social experience. Olive, capers, sun-dried tomatoes, onions, everything you can, you'd like to have, you can find it here. Are you hungry, Rosella? Yes, I'm very hungry. Too many information for me, Laura, so I need to eat. But can I ask you uh, what this is? Do you know that they are prickly pears that are the symbol of Sicily, but you can also have fresh fruit, pomegranate, watermelon. So at the market you can choose a lot to eat or to drink also. Do you, know, do you, want, do you want to try pistachios or almonds or spices? You'll find a lot here. Ciao America! <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it's tall enough? <laughs> and do you know the name of this? Zucchini. Cucuta. Cucuta. 
And this is a special product that we make in November and maybe you can think it's real fruit, it's uh, their real um, vegetables or fruit. It's pastry, it's made with pastry, with almond pastry and it is typical for the All Saints Day. Look at this, it's amazing. Do you want to try some broccoli? <laughs> Oh, look at the figs. <laughs> yeah, you can try the figs, the apricots. So they our, our friends love figs. <laughs> this is my favorite vegetable, eggplant the king or the queen of the Sicilian cuisine. We use it almost everywhere. An important lesson for you. So we are in the Ballarat district, one of the humblest districts here in the city center, but this simple church uh, hides a treasure. Let's go inside. Have you seen what I told you? We are inside the Jesus church made by the Jesuit order in the 17th century. And this is a typical Baroque style church here from Sicily, completely covered with marble inlays. It was an extraordinary work that lasted more than 100 years to do that. And it was unfortunately bombed during the Second World War, but it has been rebuilt extraordinarily. One day we will talk about the question, the most important question in Sicily is do we have to call it Arancina or Arancino? But this is another chapter. Today we eat Arancine. Arancina. Yes. Because we are in Palermo. Because we are in Palermo. And we eat Arancina. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you! <laughs> Come to Sicily to enjoy this masterpiece. We are in front of the masterpiece of the Sicilian desserts. Mr. Cannolo, the king. <laughs> Can I have a, a cannolo? Yeah. Posso avere un bel cannolo? Classico. Classico, con un cioccolata da una parte e granella di English, pistacchio. Please. Chocolate from one side and uh, pistacchio the other side. Or, or would you like the almonds? Thank you. So guys, I really hope you enjoy this masterpiece Sunday. Come to Palermo and don't miss the chance to enjoy the king of the Sicilian cuisine, the king of the Sicilian desserts, Cannolo. Mm. 
stop, stop, stop. <laughs> Another masterpiece, Sicilian masterpiece, is granita. What it is? Isn't that cream? No, we have ice cream and we have granita. Two different things. Oh, wow. Look, look. This is pistachio. Yeah. And this is almond. And also this, what is it, Danka? This is cassatella. It's a small cassata. Because the big one is this. Big cassata. And small cassata. Cassatella. Thank you. Thank you, bye. <laughs> Ciao. Ciao, ciao. Behind of me, the beautiful cathedral of Palermo, and she is Santa Rosalia, the main saint of Palermo. Look at this beauty! Behind us, you can see the cathedral. Uh, it's of course a must see during our uh, guided tours of Palermo. Uh, and uh, at this point, usually people uh, are thirsty and ask for something to drink. So, also, me, <laughs> I need something to drink. What do you suggest me? Okay, come on, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> Come on! Follow us! Where we are now? We are in the historic center of Palermo. Uh, this is uh, Corso Vittorio Emanuele. A beautiful street. Also called Cassaro. Yeah. This is the oldest street in Palermo. From the Phoenician age, the Carthaginians who built Palermo, then to the, of course, to the Spanish period. This is the main road. I, I think you will uh, enjoy this walking tour. Look, look. What are you drinking, Rosella? Um, I don't know, maybe an orange juice or... Ask our friend if they know pomegranate. Yes, of course. Oh, thank you. You cannot imagine what you are missing now. In front of the cathedral. That's one of the reasons why join us here in Palermo. Wonderful! It's for you or for me also? <laughs> this is for you. I took the orange juice. Hmm. Grazie. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> Hello again. <laughs> How are you? 
Gianca, please remember our friends what we saw today. Today we saw a lot of beautiful things. Uh, we, we started our virtual tour from the Massimo Theatre. I remember again, this is the third most important opera house in the world. It's a masterpiece of architecture. Uh, then we uh, went, we followed the Makeda road and we reached the Four Corners. Yes. That's the heart of the city center of Palermo. Um, then we met uh, our special tourist guide, Laura, and we visited uh, with her the Fountain of the Shame, Piazza Pretoria. Uh, then we went to the uh, city hall. Then we went and we visited the uh, Piazza Bellini with the Martorana Church. And then we went to Ballarò district. Uh, you remember the outdoor market of Ballarò? And of course the Casa Professa, the Church of Jesus into the outdoor market. So, these are the most important uh, location, the must-see location in Palermo, but of course, this is just a preview, a special gift for you. Palermo is very, very richer, so there will be many, many things that you will see during your uh, guided tour of Palermo. Gianca, please tell our friends the top reasons to visit Palermo. So there are many reasons, but first of all, the heritage. Palermo boasts uh, almost 2,700 years of history. Uh, first Carthaginians, Phoenicians, uh, uh, Romans, Arabians, Normans, Spanish, a lot of people came to Palermo. Everyone. So, and you saw the proof of these uh, dominations. Then I will say, Palermo now is very safe. Yeah. A beautiful town to experience because the nightlife is one of the funnest nightlife in, uh, in the world. If you follow our recommendation, our suggestion, and you choose your uh, accommodation in the area between the Massimo Theatre, the Four Corners, the Cathedral, so in the old city center that's as you can see is very very uh, enjoyable if you stay here you will enjoy the nightlife because everything the clubs the restaurants the shops everything will, will be walking distance so this is the second reason and then of course i know my friends I know that you love the food and wine experiences and the Palermo is the capital of the food and wine experiences because Palermo is ranked fifth in the special uh, world rank about street food but Palermo means of course a lot of beautiful experiences everywhere so everywhere you stop you can enjoy something different pastries, desserts Orange juice, pomegranate juices, uh, cannoli, uh, a lot, a lot, a lot of very, very good food. So, you can eat and drink every time. <laughs> and maybe I know that for uh, someone of you, this is the most important reason. <laughs> yes, I agree with you. <laughs> so, guys, uh, as I told you, as I said, this is a gift. Uh, in the next days, we will give you some more uh, special gifts. I want to introduce the chapter two, how to plan a perfect trip to Sicily. So stay tuned and uh, bye. <laughs> Salute, cheers. Waiting for you, <laughs> bye.